fifth time I've tried to record this episode of Love Me Long Time. Today I'm inside the house, it's nine o'clock in the morning, it's nearly 40 degrees outside. Ridiculous. The cats, I'm in the lounge, they're driving me potty. Um, Gary. So, I've got my dates all mixed up in the last episode, as I do. Gary was 40 when I met him, and that was back in 1999. Solomon was on his first trip to Thailand. He met Gary playing pool in a bar just along the beach. And both were staying at the Dusit Resort. The Gary's now 60. We've stayed in touch over all the years. And he's even been to visit us in the UK. He's coming here in a few months to say hi. So I know his story pretty well. But over 20 years, there's a lot we just don't want to cover on a love story. All we want to know is the nitty gritty, twists and turns. What's it like being a billionaire and trying to find a wife? A mother of his future children that can take on his empire he lost Gary lost his family at a young age about 25 when he lost them he um, he has the empire it all runs itself he's earning silly money every day it's ridiculous it's obscene amount of money but because of that the way he's been brought up his lifestyle it's hard for somebody like that to fit in what I would call the normal world. He has been brought up to travel first class. Everything done for him. Wherever he goes, whatever he does, he buys it. Because that's the way he's been brought up. But it, it, He's quite a down to earth guy in some ways. He's not, as I said before, he's not flash with his money, although he looks expensive just looking at him. He stands out a mile by his clothes and just the way he is. He's 300 pounds, he's quite, you know, medium build, he's six foot plus. He's a big guy. But you can tell money's dripping off him just because of his clothes and the way he smells and everything. So every girl in Asia is gonna that is looking for a potential partner, he's gonna be a number ten, top of the list. Back when I first met him, I didn't know anything about Thailand, hardly anything at all. And for a couple of years, well then I got the bar job and I learned a lot within those first few years. He did come to my bar one day and um, in those couple of years and we caught up but all he was succeeding in doing was bouncing from one Thai aerobics instructor tour guide to another he was just going from bar to bar to go go bar in all the entertainment zones of Thailand now going forward maybe four years 2000, 2005 something like that we caught up and he came to see me in England, met the other half, saw what our life was and he told me about everything that had been happening for those few years and he kept repeating himself over and over again that he was looking for the 25 year old stunning Thai woman who had no family never had children who wanted to go and live with a 300 pound guy who's six foot plus on a ranch in hot Texas and be treated like a queen and have children and that's the sole purpose to take care of him and have his children now to me that's he's trying to buy a woman and I did a video recently about this and I even back then I said to him it's not gonna happen you're not gonna be happy 
it's not going to work. You're going to find a girl, have the kids, and she's going to leave you because she won't like the lifestyle. Ideally, you need to get yourself a base in Thailand instead of just wandering around bar to bar. You need a home over in Thailand and you need to be able to give that person more of a life. And he, he sort of hadn't thought of that. He said, well, I thought I was just going to spend all my days in Texas, have the wife and the kids and and I said to him, but that, surely that's going to be boring because you don't work. You just, other people look after your companies. And that's, that's just not much of a life with all the, you know, with, with your finances, you can do anything you want. Surely it's better to be, um, travel a bit and enjoy life. And he hadn't really enjoyed his life because he'd had all that silver spoon given to him and all the money. All he'd done is travel pay for whatever he wanted, when he wanted, and got his own ways. It really wasn't much of a life. And he had just, at that time in 2005, discovered Phuket, which was more of an upper class resort. It can be, you know, it's also a normal resort, but you can get slightly better hotels there, maybe slightly better ladies, partners. The beaches are there. Uh, nice there's more to see around there and he discovered Phuket and enjoyed it and loved it and I said to him it's a gorgeous part of the you know the world why don't you get somewhere there and buy somewhere to you it's like you could on one day salary he could have bought a, a nice condo so money was absolutely no object and I said if you based yourself there rather than staying in all these hotels you you'd get a bit more of a normal life. Maybe you could dress down. And I kept saying to him, you, if you find the right girl, you, at that time I didn't really know about the real Thailand. I was just learning about it all. and didn't know that there was so many normal people here in Thailand that would have made great potential wives for him. But not what he was looking for. A 25 year old dolly girl that's no kids and no family. It's just not gonna happen. Anyway, we had a great old chat when he visited and uh, the next year, 2006, he kept the same story, one, this time in Phuket. Girls, different bars, he must have done every bar in Phuket, surely. Then he was back to Bangkok and he started trying the dating agencies, the introduction agencies, the apps. He was quite savvy on the computer were just about there they were just starting to pop up 2007 2008 he was still doing the same 2009 2010 time was ticking over he was now 50 still no girlfriend and he'd never spent more than 24 hours maybe 36 hours with one girl we talked again other people I knew had also talked to him and he was becoming disillusioned with Thailand well no wonder just doing that all the time it wasn't going to happen that way he had a quick spell in Europe he even dated a few Thai girls off agencies in Texas or in America and didn't work and he seemed to come to that crossroads in, in round about 2010. He'd come to the crossroads and we spoke quite a lot at that time. Um, and he spent 10 years looking for one woman. Ridiculous amount of money he'd spent. And he was always paying two, three times the price, whatever a woman was asking for the tour experience. So he's pretty much known, I would imagine. Thailand's a very small place. If you only live in the entertainment zones and that's all you travel around, you get known. Bongo drums. So girls were beginning to get to know him, you know, in certain bars and go-go bars. He decided to take the plunge.
2011. He bought a condo in Phuket, in Patong, and that's back then, 2011, the 5 million baht he paid, um, which was what, 125,000, back then it was probably 100,000 pounds. $120,000. It was not a lot of money. It was nothing for him. Absolutely nothing. It was like two and a half days salary. He bought a condo in Patong, 5 million baht. And it was a luxury one. It was a lovely one. I think it was three bedroom, had a pool. And it was only about 10 condos in the complex. Security, had everything. And he, he spent another, <laughs> I think I got it right. He spent another two, three million just kitting it out with everything mad mad and still to this day he has that condo yes so yeah 2011 he decided to spend a bit more time in Thailand as if he hadn't spent enough and he came across to Thailand stayed for three months at a time this time instead of searching for that woman we'd all told him he would have to go for an older lady he was 50 years old 51 he'd be better looking for a 30 32 33 year old woman there's a chance he'd find one that hadn't had kids and maybe didn't have a huge family we were all starting to learn about the families in thailand and the culture and looking after the family and he was learning this as well. We were, quite a few of us all chatting and figuring out what was what. And I was going through it with my partner. He didn't really, he kept saying he didn't really want to have a girlfriend, future wife, mother of his kids with a external, you know, with a family. But having a base in Thailand, he could, as long as she, in his words, produced a kid or two, a couple of children, he wouldn't mind if she came and stayed in the condo and saw a family. So he said, okay, I'm gonna to have to accept that. He started moving the goalposts, which was great. And he understood, began, began to understand that a Thai partner would wanna come back to Thailand. And that maybe his life when he finds Mrs. Wright would actually include traveling and not just staying in Texas, locking him and his missus and kids in the ranch and being miserable for the rest of his days. So he started realizing there was more to life. Well, this was the time when he started getting realistic. He also, because everyone in the area started to know him, to see him come down the road, his clothes stood out a mile. All the girls started to know him. And he started to get to know some of the girls. He started spending time outside of the bars, eating things like street food, which he never did before. He would only go to five-star restaurants. He started exploring. Phuket, admittedly, it was an entertainment area, but he started exploring Phuket properly. He started exploring the island and around that area and started spending time on the streets, still in his clothes, designing clothes, eating street food. And at this point, by coming outside of the bars into a sort of real Thailand, he began to meet some ordinary girls that weren't working in bars. He was sat down from what he said, actually at Karen Beach, just along the road a bit, out on a road, eating, as he called it, street food, noodle food, <laughs> noodle food, and a girl on the table next to him started talking to him. She was uh, trying to get the ages. She must have been 30. 
she had her own shop. Uh, I don't know, I can't remember what he told me. I don't think it was a coffee shop, but it was maybe it was sim it was an upmarket shop in Caron Beach. Maybe it was selling fashion or something. But she had her own little boutique in in a small little marketplace. So it wasn't a big shop front. It was a more of a market, half market store shop. So it was a shop with no front sort of thing, an open shop. But she had her own little boutique, and. Um, this girl was called B. Oh. Let's leave it there. Gary meets B. Hmm. I'll talk to you on the next one. Bye for now.